Welcome to Community of Love Christian Fellowship, where God loves you and we do too. Join us in person on Sundays from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. for 60 minutes of dynamic praise, inspiring fellowship, and life-changing worship. Point your GPS to 557 Cambridge Street in the Austin neighborhood of Boston, Massachusetts, 02134. Visit us on the web at colcf.org. That's colcf.org. To learn more about our Friday evening services, our various ministries, and our upcoming special events. Now, let's join the service already in progress. My life. Yelled out to God. He said, Oh God, save me. And just like that, God is sending somebody, sending his spirit. And we find the power to just.
excited to share with you a word from the Lord this afternoon. I want to encourage you if you have your Bible with you to look at Psalm 3. Psalm 3. If you have your digital device, I want to punch it up. Psalm 3. Very familiar passage. Psalm 3. And if we had to have a title, I just want to pull from the words of David himself. Save me, O oh my God. Save me, O oh MG. Save me. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Save me. Allow me to read this for you here. Oh Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield about me. My glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy heel. Say, I lay down and slept. I, I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I would not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O oh Lord, save me, O oh my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. Really go in when they talk about your mom. 
They talk about your faith. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they really go in when they talk about your mom. And they talk about your faith. The, the, those are just about fighting murders if, if you haven't uh, been redeemed yet. For those of us who have been redeemed, they always fight the murders. But, but we know the Lord is on our side and we don't have to defend the Lord. But you know you're in the heat of a battle when somebody starts calling you out your name, which for me is attacking against your mom, because your mom and your daddy perhaps named you. But then when they start saying that you don't have the courage, you don't have the vision, you don't have the skills, you don't have the gifts to do this, now you're talking about God. Because God is the one who infused within me the skills, the gifts, the talents, the experience, the wisdom, the talent, the two of the things that God is talking to. And if you're going to look at me and tell me I can't do that, those are almost fighting words. So here, David, in verse 2, it suggests that people are telling them he ain't got no relationship with God. And what I love about this moment is we find this word say by S E L A H, which we find about 73, 74 times in the Bible, but about 70, 71 times in the Psalms. And the word Selah means this. It means to pause and think. It means to pause and reflect. In my own L.A. style translation, it means to let this marinate for a second. So when you see the word Selah, that means hold on. Something you just read was really deep. Just let it get on all of it. Let it let you got to massage it into the meat. And so even in this passage, there's only eight verses in this passage, and you see the word say about three times. Now, within the context of it being 73 to 74 times in the Bible, and you got three of them here in Psalm 3 that only has eight verses, something deep is going on right here, just to set the context for it. So we got David saying, many are rising against me. They, they, they're coming to take me out and they, they're even attacking my faith. And then he says, let me just bury me what this is saying. Then he moves on and he says, but you, O oh Lord, he changes his focus from the many who are coming at him to the Lord. He says, but you, O oh Lord, are a shield about me. You, O oh Lord, are my glory. You, O oh Lord, are the lifter of my hand. Let's break this down. You know that when you have a shield about you or around you, that whatever's trying to come at you gets blocked off by a shield. Whether you're talking about old and evil times when you had a shield and you had it here, and folks were cleaning rocks at you and just blocked them off. Or if you're talking about the old school ninja times, and times out like we had a shield and all the spears and, and all the arrows coming at you and you're doing it here. Or you're talking about the legion and they come and make a big block and they all put their shield up and the many shields come together and create a fortress. Whatever your image is, your illustration is, God is a shield about us. That's why some of us sing that old song, Jesus, be a fence all around me each and every day. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I go about my way. Because no matter what anyone throws at you, does to you, speaks against you, God is our shield about you. Now let me ask you a hypothetical question because if you have a shield and, and, and you know that whatever's being hurled at you is going to hurt, but if the shield blocks it, do you still say ouch? And they 
Then he said that you are the lifter of my head. We know that when we're under attack, depression is real. And the first thing that we do when we get depressed, our head tips down. We have a very difficult time looking people eye to eye and we mow around and somehow we get swollen up to the spine because our spine just kind of crooks over and we, we're not able to stand tall with our shoulders erect and our neck be long. When we get depressed, our whole physiology and physical presence changes. But David says, I have a reason to be depressed because my own son is trying to take me out. But God, you are the shield around me. You are my glory. You are the lifter of my head. You allow me to be strong. You allow me to stay engaged. You allow me to stay focused on what you have me to do. And then it says, I cried aloud to the Lord. Some of us need to cry aloud. Woo! You need to stop there. Because I know we go to our prayer classes and we do the yell. But some of us need to explain it. Some of us need to physically get that stuff out of our system. All those toxins. Some of us need to get one of the, I know I did the incredible heart thing last week, but some of us need to really get that thing out of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David cries aloud, and then it says, and God answered him from his holy hill. Yeah. Sometimes when we cry aloud, God, I'm in pain. I hurt. I need you. And God hears you. And God answers you from his holy hill. A part of the story here is Absalom is chasing David, and now Absalom David has a few faithful, and they are instructed by God to go to the highest point. Uh, in terms of military uh, uh, principles and activities, if you go to the highest point, you can see the folks coming at you. You can get a good count as to how many people, you can get a good understanding of the strategy, how they're going to mobilize around you. Plus, there's no, no way to get around you because you're at the highest point. So here we have figuratively, but also literally, Raise me, God, to the highest hill so I can really see what's going on. And in that moment, we have another say lie. <laughs> Whoa. This is crazy when you think about it. Here you have David under attack by his own son, his own people, and he's like, let me just pause and marinate on what I just said for a moment. There's a severe urgency. David is fighting for his life. He's fighting for his life, but yet he takes time to pause and let what God just said marinate. Y'all know like me, something pops off. You get on the phone, you send an email, you gotta tweet a little bit, you post on Facebook, and you get out and you do and do and do. And God said, why don't you just sit still for a second? Let it marinate. Let me work on healing you before you try to go and heal other people. Let me help you to reflect so you can really see what's going on in the atmosphere. We are so cause effect, cause effect, situation resolution, situation, and God said, just chill for a second. And then, y'all gotta forgive me, but verse five is, gets me. In the midst of all this, David says, I lay down and slept. Ooh, I'm working through this one. Y'all got to help me with this one because I'm working through this one. Everything I lay down, he just marinated on it, and his response to the marination is that he laid down and slept. What? OMG, for real. We 
woke up a few times and flipped over or had to make the bathroom run two times. He slept. He regenerated his body and allowed the Lord to give him what he needed to go through the next day. Then it says, I will not be afraid of any thousands of people who set themselves against me all around. Because he slept, he had the courage to face the thousands of people. Many of them his own. See, I love Psalm 3. It's nice and short. It's one of those ones that you can actually memorize and pull out right when you need. Then it says, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Ooh, he getting graphic. I'm sorry. This is like R rated stuff here. This is in the Bible. I mean, like, this is scandalous. I mean, this is like, whoa. This is like, whoa. Because he said, you don't even get them in the heart. You like smack them in the cheek. And when you smack them in the cheek, you shatter your teeth. What? Who even does that? Who, who even? Who, who does that? He, he didn't even kill them. He popped them in the mouth, shattered their teeth. And then it says, salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing beyond your people. See, marinate on that. Drop the mic. Hashtag God's got it. Peace. <laughs> I mean, it's right there. Eight verses. Transformed it. God has fixed it. Healed it. Keep the faith. 